Hello viewers, yesterday midnight was a disappointing day for India. That was the time when the United Nations Security Council informed that China had put a technical hold for the fourth time in succession in UNSC listing Masood Azhar, the jaish e mohammed chief, as an international terrorist. And so there's been a lot of activity around it and uh, there's been a lot of criticism too criticism on both sides. On one side it is being said that China has been acting like a hard state and does not uh, account for sentiments of its neighbors. On the other hand it is being said that India should not have raised it to such a pitch that uh, a defeat becomes uh, uh, occasion an occasion of enjoyment and merriment for Pakistan. So, But uh, what we have seen now is that Jaish-e Mohammed chief uh, Masood Azhar has again got off the hook but there's a ray of hope over there because this technical hold by China will last for six months and China has already said that we would like to have a wider regional agreement on this rather than taking piecemeal action against terrorists. So this means that if India was to engage continuously with China and Pakistan for the next six months, probably there could be some other change in direction. Probably Masood Azhar would be named as a UNSC listed terrorist. But at the same time, we have to uh, take a look at uh, what this naming of terrorists has done. Actually, the UNSC listing of terrorists is not a very complicated affair. In fact, last month, uh, Osama bin Laden's son was named as an international terrorist because he suspected, only suspected, no proof, suspected of being the new head of Al-Qaeda. And similarly, in 2008, if you remember, uh, Hafiz Saeed of lashkar e Toiba was uh, accused of masterminding the Mumbai attacks and just a little after a year he was named as an international terrorist and China did not put a hold on that. So maybe there are lessons to be learned from that. There are lessons to be learned how to approach uh, China and do uh, convince it to, so that it does not stand in India's way. But at the same time we have to uh, account for the fact that China is really acting like a hard state. For instance, in Myanmar, there's this dispute over my Sitone Dam that is being built in Myanmar's Kachin area. And China is really arm twisting Myanmar uh, to start work on the project, which Myanmar has stopped because it fears the displacement of a lot of people. Similarly, in Russia, there's a lot of unrest around Lake Baikal. Ba Lake Baikal is the same area where there's this town of Irkutsk where uh, the famous Sukhoi 30 is produced. So there's a lot of unrest in that Baikal area because it is felt that Chinese are ingressing into the area and they're even taking control of water and other resources. Similarly, in Kazakhstan, there's a lot of uh, displeasure against China for its crackdown on ethnic Kazakhs, on the Uyghurs who are found on both sides of the border in China and uh, Kazakhstan. And in fact, Kazakhstan government uh, conducted a crackdown at behest of China and uh, took away uh, a lot of uh, so-called dissidents. So um, China maybe at some point of time will have to take a close look at the kind of uh, disapproval that is coming from neighboring countries and while it advises India that uh, there should be a wider regional solution to this problem of terrorism, China too should think of a wider regional solution where it does not individually rub against and grate against so many countries at the same time. Thank you viewers, that's all for now.